Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another prep hour with Steve. Hope this finds you well and um, working hard towards your goal Greetings, of passing everyone. OET. Welcome to yeah. a um, remove some of that background noise. Type in yes if you can hear me clearly and type in yes if you can see me clearly as well. Um, and also type in your location and time. It's the 27th of July. It's just gone 7 a.m. It's a sunny morning here in Brisbane, a little bit cold because we're in winter time. Perhaps it's summer to you. Um, I can see lots of people coming in. So on YouTube, hello to the Maldives. Hello to Namibia. Uh, welcome to Saudi and Brazil. Kuwait is here. Hello, India. Good to see all those. I'm getting a big yes, 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 so everyone can hear and see me. That is wonderful. Now let me just check my Facebook, make sure that's working all well. Looking good there. Excellent. And I'm just going to bring up my chat on Facebook. Bear with me one sec, everyone. All right, and we're set up there as well. Okay, we also have Saudi in New York and Namibia and lots of different locations. Yep, um, hello to the Philippines as well. <clears throat> Let's get started, everyone. Now, we're going to do listening today, everyone. We're going to do listening part A in particular. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, first of all, if you want to know who we are, we are OET Online, we're an all-stars provider, and we are fully endorsed for all 12 professions that take OET. So remember, uh, if you're taking OET, it doesn't matter what your profession are, we will have a course for you. Um, and I just want to let everyone know we do offer a free taster course. Uh, it's a, an updated resource that we put together that will give you a really good idea of what it's like to study with OET online. This great practice material there, um, really lovely content. So do come along and check it out on the website, everyone. Really, really um, good way to understand what you get when you enroll in one of our courses. And of course, it's free, check it out. Then if you like what you see, you think it will benefit from you in passing OET, then make sure that you um, sign up because you don't want to take OET repeatedly and not get through everyone. Mm -hmm. And I'll drop in a link to our website in the chat just so you know where we are there. All right, let's move on. I've got one last thing to do here. All right, that's good. Okay. So we're going to start with part A, as I said, everyone. So let's look at our strategies. So part A, you get 30 seconds, 30 seconds um, to prepare for your task. That 30 seconds is vital. You don't want to be distracted there. You don't want to be looking around. You've got to have your mind on the job and you must engage with your stimul stimulus, all right? So reading, sure, it's a listing test, but reading skills are necessary, right? So you've got to read ahead in that 30 seconds um, because if you don't, even if you're a native speaker, you will find it hard to keep up with the whole test. So really important that you read ahead so you don't miss any gaps. Okay. So let's go through a few of these points. Uh, um, 
Now, make sure you underline the important words before and after each gap, because that gives you focus. So you can also predict what type of word is going to come. All right, that's vital. There are also subheadings on the left hand side, which are like chapter markers. They let you know when you're moving from one section to one section. So make sure you look at the subheadings on the left so that you understand the structure. Now, it will be a consultation, but usually it's a specialist, not a GP talking to a patient, but normally a specialist um, about a specific aspect of that patient's health. Um, you'll find that the patient does nearly all the talking. So what OET is testing for you on part A is your ability to understand patient language, right? We'll talk more on that later. Um, and uh, the structure can vary depending on the task, but sometimes there's a bit of background, a background check. There'll be discussion of the current recent symptoms, treatment that they've received or treatment options. Um, as we said, nearly 95% of the answers will come from the patient. So you've got to focus on that. Um, but you can help improve your score and um, get more answers correct by predicting what you think will come next. And we'll look at that live when we look at our task coming up. Um, but we can predict whether we're going to get a noun, a verb, an adjective, what type of word is going to fit in that gap. There are lots of little clues that can help you with that. Um, as you can imagine, and luckily, the gaps follow the sequence of the recording. So you just work your way through. Um, if you make a mistake, um, a spelling error, or uh, you, put, you write down a word, then you realize it's wrong, don't erase it. Just cross it out. There's no marks for neatness. Um, if you do miss an answer, have a guess. There are no penalty marks. Sometimes you might be able to guess correctly, or you might half hear the word, and then you might hear the word, but you can't spell it, but you know the medical word for that condition. So that medical word will also be accepted if it has the same meaning. Okay. Let's continue. Um, now, just in terms of assessment, just the basics, everyone, answers must be written in the space provided, um, in the gap handwritten or typed if you're doing a computer-based test. Uh, you've got to provide enough correct information. If the patient had severe back pain, but you just wrote pain, you may not get the mark and they don't give half marks. So you have to give enough information that would summarize that situation. Um, there's no penalty for including information that's not in the marking guide. Um, so that's okay if you've added extra. But if the meaning of what you wrote is unclear, or maybe you made a grammatical error, you put up, um, for example, you put sweaty instead of sweating, then that wouldn't be deemed correct. So you do have to get the right word there um, and the right word form. Do write as clearly as possible, um, because if the assessor can't read your writing, you won't get the mark. It's not a neatness test, um, but try to write as clearly as possible. Um, synonyms of words are generally not accepted unless they're a medical word. That's the only exception there. Um, you can, however, use some abbreviations or symbols. For example, blood pressure, if you put BP, that would be accepted. So yes, you can. Um, now you're not going to be penalized for misspelling as long as the meaning is clear, but and it needs to be a reasonable attempt. But if you spell a word, for example, and you write down something like um, waste, you know, where is the pain located around the waist? But if you wrote waste and you spelt it wrong and you created a new word, a homonym, 
then you would not get that mark. So be aware of that, everyone. Um, if the answer should be waste, you'll get the mark. But if you wrote waste, unlikely you would not get the mark. Um, sometimes you're going to face spelling of difficult words like medical conditions or medications that are hard, and that's where you got to get your got to get your phonetics right. If you get it phonetically correct, you'll get the mark. And lastly, UK and US spelling um, are both accepted. And I'll have a little bit of talk. I'll have a little chat about spelling at the end of this session. But right now, I would like to get stuck into our task. Now, our target score that we want everyone is going to be 10 out of 12. Quite a high score, 10 out of 12. And that's vital, everyone, because listing part A constitutes uh, 24 marks. So over half of your total listening score does come from part A. You need to be good at it. If you're getting under 10, then you're going to put a lot of pressure on yourself in the part B and part C where it gets progressively harder. All right, does that make sense? Any questions so far? Type in AG if all good. And that's our goal. And a lot of practice, you might be starting now, you might not be getting that score consistently yet, but with hard work and over time, you'll be able to reach that target. All right. Now, um, we're doing a task. It's actually an OET Center one. It's from uh, their set three. I'll show you where that is at the end of this lesson. Um, but let's, these men have one condition, right? We've got Alexander the Great, Kublai Khan, Michael Angelo, Benjamin Franklin, um, Isaac Newton. What do these... What do these people have in common? There's a medical condition. Does anyone know what it is? These famous men in history, they had something wrong with them. Can you predict it? Alexander the Great, Kublai Khan, Michelangelo, Benjamin Franklin, and Isaac Newton. Have a think about that. What medical condition? Oh, Sebi's onto it. Yes, they all had gout. They all suffered from gout. Now, for OET preparation, a really good idea is to study symptoms associated with common medical conditions. That's your vocabulary building, right? So when you're studying at home, look up various medical conditions and look at all the language associated with those conditions, particularly symptoms, causes, treatment, all that information, because that's the vocabulary that can appear in listing part A. So that's a really good idea, everyone. So what is gout? It's a metabolic disorder um, caused by uric acid, and it's the disposition and accumulation of salts in the joint. Sounds painful, doesn't it? It leads to inflammation and pain in the small joints, common symptoms. And then we've got gout attack locations, most common in the knee, ankle, and particularly the big toe. Um, that's the issue of gout. Now let's talk a little bit about vocabulary, everyone. I'm gonna, I want you, we're gonna talk about types of pain. So um, there's a good chance in, uh, OET test, a patient will describe their pain using an adjective, and your job will be to hear that word. So one way to build your skills is to think about types of pain. So I've got some definition, definitions here, everyone. So let's get a little bit interactive. And can you type in words which mean um, these statements on the left? And I'll read them out. You don't have to go in order. So you pick a word that relates to this type of pain. So what would we call a pain 
that starts suddenly and feels sharp. A pain that starts suddenly and is really sharp. Have a think about that. And I'll give you a hint. A pain that starts suddenly and it's sharp, like um, the edge of a triangle. All right, it's got a pointy end. Someone's gone stabbing. Yeah, but stabbing's not really sharp. But yes, acute, well done. So first one is acute, right? What about a pain that lasts a long period of time? Might go on for years. It never ends. Quite debilitating. A pain that lasts a long period of time. How would you describe that? Um, next one, a pain that occurs when the effects, oh, that's a good one. A pain that occurs when the effect of painkillers wear off. That's the third one, but there's the second one. A pain that lasts a long period of time is chronic. Chronic with a silent H in the spelling, everyone. Uh, what would you call a pain that occurs? Well, this is an interesting one. You, you prescribe painkillers to your patient. The pain wears off, the painkillers wear off, and then the pain re-emerges. What sort of pain is used for pain which re-emerges? There's a special word, everyone. Do you know what it is? Recurrent, yes, that's a good word, but there's another word. I'll give it to you, everyone. Breakthrough pain. Yes, Sab's got it. Well done, Sab's. Breakthrough pain. That would be the exact kind of word OET Center would test you for. What about when the brain feels pain in a part of the body that's been removed? Right. Imagine you had a limb removed, amputated, but there was still pain in that limb. The limb is gone, but there's still pain. There's a special word for that. Does anyone know what it is? The, the, the brain can feel the pain, but the part of the body is gone. But the nerve endings are reacting. And that's got a particular word for that. Can you think what it is? Oh, yes. I mean, well done. Phantom with a PH. I noticed someone spelled it with an F. I think you'd even get the mark with that because it's phonetically correct. Phantom pain, right? What about pain from an internal organ that can be felt in a different part of the body? So maybe you've got um, something going on in your abdomen, but you're getting pain in your shoulder. What do we call that? A pain is... Not in the location where the problem is, but it's in a different location. Special word for that as well. I'm sure many of you will know that one. Referred pain, zine, right onto it, yes. Yeah, we can say it radiated, that's the verb, and we call it referred pain, radiating to other parts of the body. What about the next one? A pain that follows the path of a nerve and it's intense spike in pain. A pain that follows the path of a nerve creates an intense spike in pain. It's following the nerve pathway. This could be a tricky one, like a shooting pain. Yes, and that's the shooting, exactly, Sabs, or a stabbing pain. Some people mentioned that before. Yes, it shoots up or it stabs, quite intense. What about a pounding, beating, or pulsing pain? Think about your heart. Think about your pulse. What do we call that sort of pain? Think about it. 
pounding, beating, it's pulsing, it's not continuous. Yes, a few people are getting that one. Well done, everyone. Um, Abdul, yes, a throbbing pain. Okay, what if you have mild discomfort occurring at a low level? So it's not a severe pain occurring at a low level over a long period of time. It's like in the background, but it doesn't go away. It's not acute. It's not throbbing, but it's always there and you can feel it. Yeah, people are getting that one. Subs is on to it. A dull pain, exactly. A dull pain. All right. And the last one, this is a bit of a hard one. <clears throat> when your skin seems extremely exposed, right, and it's sore and tender, it's... It's like meat exposed and the slightest touch will cause pain. And I'll give everyone a hint. This is a hard one. It begins with the letter R, everyone. It begins with the letter R. Pain, it's extremely exposed and sore. Excruciating, that's a great word, you cat. That's not what we're looking at here. Burning, yep. I'll bring this one up, everyone. It's a raw pain. You can have a raw pain. So there's so many words that describe pain. Um, the reason I'm showing you this, make sure in your own study, a really good strategy is to build your knowledge of words that describe pain, that describe types of headaches, that describe types of coughs, Words that describe um, different medical conditions, if you build that vocabulary, you will be able to build your score in listing part A. Okay, now we're going to do a task, everyone. You've got to tune your ear. Now, what I want you to do for this, I want you to get yourself a piece of paper. Got a piece of paper there, probably hard to see. Get yourself a piece of paper, and on your paper, write down the numbers 1 to 12, right? 1 to 12. And I am going to, I'm going to do this myself as well. I'm going to write down those numbers. I don't have my pen handy. Have your pen. Write down the numbers 1 to 12, right? And I'm going to play this straight through from start to finish. And your job is to get the answer. So while you're preparing for that, let's just have a little look at our language and what we're listening for. So we've got Harry Davies. So we look at the topic. You hear a rheumatologist talking to a patient called Harry Davies who suffers from gout. So we already know the medical condition and he's attending uh, for a medication review. For questions one to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. So instructions are clear. So we've got to follow. The first on the left, we have medical history. Okay, so the beginning is going to be about medical history. And then on the second column, we've got treatment received. So he suffers from gout, had his first attack while on holiday. Pain in his... Okay, it's going to be a location, doesn't it, everyone? Pain in his... Must be a body part. So we can predict that. It's going to be a noun accompanied by swelling. Initially thought it was either something, okay, or something, maybe two. So initially, so this is Harry. Harry thought, so number two, it will be a medical condition, everyone. Possibly related to medication taken for, again, taken for, we take medication for medical conditions. So three, will most likely be some sort of medical condition. We can predict that. Describes the pain as, you see this word a lot in OET listening, everyone. And we've got it in inverted commas. So it's gonna be an adjective, a word to describe the pain. Maybe it's one of the words we looked at before. 
was unable to. Now, after to, we're going to get a verb. So we know unable to do something. We don't know what, but something he couldn't do. What couldn't Harry do? Says the clinic initially suspected, right? It's going to be another medical condition. What was suspected? It's going to be a noun. We're not going to hear the word initially. You might hear the word at first. As you listen, look for synonyms so that you can follow the thread. Um, reports feeling similar pain after something. Now, this is a preposition, after. What sort of word comes after a preposition? Well, it will be an ing word after doing something, or it could be a noun after dinner. So we can sort of predict what's coming. Eight, something not effective. So now we're on to treatment. Something not effective. Well, that will be some sort of treatment. Maybe it's a medication that wasn't effective. So we've got to listen out for that. Or maybe it will be some sort of therapy which was ineffective. And we've got another medication, colchicine, and that caused something. Okay, that's going to be a symptom. The medication is going to be like a side effect. We know it will be. We can predict that. And there's two side effects. Also nausea. Um, and then if we look at 11, we've got something quite effective. This is all about the medication, isn't it? So I'm suspecting 11 is going to be a medication name. We don't know which one, but it will be some type of medication because it was quite effective. And then we've got allopurinol caused something. We've got another side effect. Okay. Now you're going to do all that in 30 seconds, everyone. All right, let's play it live, everyone. And as I said, what I want you to do is write down your answers. And then at the end of the session, we're going to go through it. All right, let's begin. Are you ready, everyone? I'm going to press play. We've read it. We're ready to go. Target score 10 out of 12. Here we go. He has referred you to me 12. so that we just bear, give me one here we second, go. Here, everyone. You can he has referred you to me 12. so that we just, just bear, give me one here we second, go. Here, everyone. Just got another thing to get rid of. You can he has referred you to me 12. so that we just, just bear, give me one here second we go. here, everyone. Got to get rid of this sound. Just causing just a little bit another thing to get rid of. You can he has referred you to me 12. so that we... Just, just bear, give me one here second we go. here, everyone. Got to get rid of this sound. Just causing just a little bit another... Okay. Fix the problem. All right, here we go, live, everyone. Mr. Uh, Davis, yep. I understand your GP has referred you to me so that we can review the medications you're taking for your gout. That's right. So, um, tell me a bit about this gout. Uh, when did it start? Well, my first serious attack was last year. My wife and I were on holiday and I woke up one morning with a really bad pain in my left knee. Well, I never thought of gout because I always assume that just happens somewhere like your big toe. And anyway, I'm only 40. I thought it was something only old people get. So anyway, it was all red and swollen and I decided it must be an insect bite. But I couldn't think how that might have happened, you know, without me feeling something at the time. Or my wife suggested it might be something to do with the pills I take for my cholesterol. Uh, unlikely, I think. <laughs> mm. But anyway, the pain didn't get any better. In fact, quite the opposite. I started to get frightened because I thought it might be a sign of something really serious. It was excruciating. So my wife thought I needed to get some help. So she phoned the local clinic and told them about my symptoms. They told her to bring me in. It was a good thing she was there. I was in too much pain to drive. 
I mean, I could only just manage to walk from the house to the car. <laughs> anyway, when we got there, the doctor took a look and said he wanted to take a blood sample. He said it might be an emergency because it looked as if it could be septicemia. Hmm. So then we got really frightened. But about an hour later, they came back and said, no, it wasn't, thankfully. But they thought I had gout. So actually, at that stage, we were quite relieved. Yeah, I can imagine. And the doctor asked if I'd ever felt anything like it before. Well, actually, then I remembered that in the winter, I play quite a bit of rugby and sometimes I'd get some soreness in the same place the day after, but I just thought I'd sprained it or something. And it would go away after a couple of days. But this pain's much worse, and it comes even when I've been resting. I've had it quite a few times since my first attack. Right. So, what have you been taking to deal with the pain? Well, at first the doctor at the clinic suggested I took some anti-inflammatories, but I can't say they made much difference. Mm. So when I got the next attack, I was at home and I went to my GP. She suggested I took, uh, I can't remember the name, a col something? A uh, colchicine? That's the one. So that dealt with the pain better, but it gave me awful diarrhoea. Yeah. I'd never take it again. And then I had a really bad attack. I think the doctor had got to the stage where, you know, she was already giving me really powerful medicines to no effect, so she gave me liquid morphine to take. It made me feel quite sick, actually, mm. and I was a little bit um, away with the fairies, you know, mm. walking around not quite knowing where I was. Right. Ah, uh, did you try any other sort of treatment apart from the medications? Yes. My GP said I could try using an ice pack, and that did make a bit of difference, but you can't have it on all the time. So anyway, after that, she said, let's try um, allopurinol, uh, see how you get on with that. Hmm. So I started taking that, but I didn't get on with it. It gave me a skin rash. So I rang her up, and she told me to stop taking it, that I'd better see a specialist. So... Here I am. <laughs> Is there anything more you can do? Well, I'm sure we can find something maybe. A... All right. How did you find that, everyone? I can see lots of answers getting typed in the chat box. Well done, everyone. So type in your answers, and I'm going to check spelling on different things. So I will check that, um, and I'm going to bring the answers up. And you mark yourself, and then at the end, tell me your score. So he had his first Serious attack while on holidays, pain in his left knee, everyone. Now, I hope you got that one. If you wrote knee only, you wouldn't get the mark. He initially thought it was either an insect bite. I saw a lot of people type that in. Possibly related to medication taken for cholesterol. A lot of people wrote that. Well done. Nice, May. May's put in a lot of answers. Good job, everyone. Looks like good spelling. Um, describes the pain as, this was a hard one, excruciating. All right, that was a bit of a challenge to spell. Um, number five, he was unable to. What couldn't he do? Couldn't drive. Six, says the clinic initially suspected septicemia now we can use american or uk spelling and you could also use blood poisoning reports previously feeling similar pain after and that was at ing rugby you could have put playing if you wished number eight something was not effective um, and that was the NSAIDs or the anti-inflammatory. So you could use the abbreviation there if you wished. Um, and then what did this was a side effect. Colchicine caused something, diarrhea. Again, a bit of a hard one to spell, but if you practice it, you can manage it. Double RH. British has an O. UK removes the O. Something caused diarrhea, and that was a hard one. Liquid morphine, yes. And you could use a medical term for liquid morphine, morphine sulfate, but liquid morphine. Um, and an ice pack was quite effective. I saw a lot of people got that. And the last one, the allopurinol caused a skin rash, a common side effect.
All right, how did you go, everyone? What was your score? Type in your score. Did you get above 10? Check it yourself, everyone. How did you go? Was your spelling reasonable? Thraya says morphine only according to official, but no, we've got here, this is actually OET official here as well. Um, ooh, a lot of people getting 10s, 12s, 11s. All right. The odd nine. Okay, great scores, everyone. Um, if you're getting a few people getting lower scores, if you're getting like seven or, you know, lower scores, that's okay. You're on the journey, just practicing. This step, would just morphine be accepted? Probably not. Probably not. It's a type of morphine. Um, all right. So, and if you, so just remember, and we'll talk about this in the next one, what to do if your score is a bit lower. But what, are, what do you reckon, everyone? Let's just jump in straight away and do another one live. So we're going to move on. We're going to do one on malaria. So question to the audience, everyone. This one's going to be a bit more intense, less preparation, everyone. So can you tell me the symptoms of malaria? What are the symptoms of malaria? Um, and while I'm waiting for that, lady asks a question. Will my answer, will my answer be correct if I answer anti-inflammatory not anti-inflammatories. Yes, I would say in that sense, it's an anti-inflammatory. So singular would be fine. Is rugby enough, says Muhammad? Absolutely. All right, so symptoms of malaria. Now, remember what I said earlier, you've a really good strategy. We looked at vocabulary for pain. So when you're doing a study at home, make sure you know the common symptoms of medical conditions. That's going to prepare you because if you just happen to have done the right study and then you face that topic on exam day, that's definitely you're going to be familiar with it and it's going to help you get more marks. So, yes, lots of words coming in. There's fatigue, fever, jaundice. Yeah, all of these are great. I'm bringing up sweating, headaches, body aches. Yes, anemia. The rigors, chills and rigors. It's all medical. That's why we love OET. Uh, diarrhea, yes, shasha. Um, muscle pain, that, that's your chills and rigor. Uh, did anyone mention fatigue, tiredness, loss of appetite, all of those things? So you can expect a lot of this language to come out in a consultation between a patient and a health professional. All right, now I'm going to make this one a bit harder, everyone. I'm going to let you do it. So I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to read this, put a bit of pressure on you. So you hear a doctor in an emergency department talking to a patient called Gail Kennedy. Okay, so we're in the ED. For questions 13 to 24, complete notes with a word or short phrase. Now, I'm not going to pre-read this for you because we're going to do this like a mock test, everyone. This is a mini mock. Because you're working off the screen, I'm going to give you a little bit more preparation to do this. I'll actually give you a bit longer, give you 45 seconds. And then I'm going to start. So start reading, everyone. And I'm just going to start playing. So read it now, write on your piece of paper. Get your pen ready. And listen, for this one, what I'll get you to do, you don't have to use pens. As you hear the answer, we'll do this one differently. As you hear the answer, just type it in the chat box. Really good if you're doing a computer-based test. All right, here we go. Start my timer. Timing.
Mrs. Kennedy? Yes. I'm Dr. Jarvis. Hello. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Okay. Now, um, can you tell me what's brought you here today? Well, I got back from holiday two weeks ago, and I've been feeling awful ever since. It was a long haul flight because we'd been to South America, oh. and when I got back, I felt awful. I thought it must be jet lag, but brutal. Much worse than I remember having before. Anyway, I thought I'd get over it, but it actually got worse. After a few days, I was getting bad chills and non stop shivering and. And achy muscles. I just felt lousy. Hmm. I mean, it, normally I'm pretty healthy. I don't get a lot of illnesses. So I started to worry. I thought maybe I got meningitis.、Right. So I rang the doctor. When I told him where I'd been, he said I should come in and see him because it might be malaria. So I said, well, it can't be because I've been taking malarone. I started on that two weeks before going away.、Uh-huh. I tried、um, oh, uh, larium、yeah. a, a few years ago. But it gave me really odd dreams, so I didn't want to take that again. Anyway, the doctor said some sorts of malaria are resistant to these drugs, and I know I did get a few bites when we were there. He gave me some pills to take for three days, just in case it was malaria. Right. Can you tell me what they were? Oh, um, art something. Ah,、oh, tesunate. That's right. And、uh, something else. Hang on, I've got the box here.、Uh, Mefloquine. Ah,、oh, okay. So I went home and I took the pills, but I didn't feel any better. In fact, I got worse. I felt really weak and I was sweating buckets, just dripping with it. I finished the pills yesterday morning.、Uh, since then, I've been really bad. I haven't been able to keep anything down. I was throwing up all day yesterday and had the most splitting headache. I've never had anything like it. So I rang the doctor again, and he said the blood test had come back negative. But if I wasn't feeling better today, I should come into the emergency department and get some more tests done. Right. Well, I'll just do a brief examination. Okay. Want to pop over there. Okay. So your skin's a good colour. I can't see any sign of jaundice, and your breathing's sounding pretty good. You haven't had any episodes of breathlessness, have you? No. But yesterday, my heart was really racing. Yes, there is some evidence of that now. And uh,、um, something else. All this week, I felt as if there was something scratchy in my eyes, like sand or something, and they feel really dry.、Mm, I see.、Uh, and have you had any abdominal discomfort? Well, there's no pain, but I don't have any appetite. I can't really keep anything down, like I said. Right. Now, apart from taking the anti malarials, did you have any vaccinations before you went away? Yeah, I had all the injections、uh, typhoid and what else?、Um, oh, not yellow fever because I'd already had that before.、Mm. Uh, but I did have one for、um, hepatitis A. Yeah. And、uh, they were fine. I don't usually have any problems with things like that. Then,、uh, while we were away, I-, I did get cold sores all over my upper lip. I've had them before, and I'd got some over the counter stuff for them, so I just used that. Right.、Uh, apart from that, I was fine during the holiday. I'm normally very healthy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I did have、um, breast cancer a few years ago. That was in 2011. I had a lumpectomy,、uh, so I was taking tamoxifen for five years, but I don't have to take it now. Okay. So it's possible that this might be a reaction to certain drugs,、oh. but we'll need to do some more. Okay, everyone, lots of answers coming through, looking really good. How did you handle that one under mock conditions, everyone? All right, let's have a look. I'll I'll bring the answers. You type in again, and if you have any questions as we go, let me know. First, assumed she had. Jet lag, symptoms intensified over time. Suspected meningitis.、Um, so、she contacted her GP. The GP suspected malaria, despite commencements of malarone. That's what the patient said.、Um, in the following days, she was sweating heavily. You could also use the medical word diaphoresis. Um, persistent vomiting. That was yesterday. You could hear that word yesterday. Now she said splitting headache, but 
if you get close with a bad headache or severe headache, which has the same meaning, that should be accepted. Uh, in terms of observation, there was no evidence of jaundice. That was great. Some people predicted that one. Well done. Um, I would extray says melarone. No, that's fine. I would accept that spelling with an E. Um, and without, and I can see Pranvira drop the E at the end, just melarone. I'd accept that as well. Um, and Hattie, I would accept your spelling of jaundice without the A as well, because it's very, very close, only one letter wrong. Uh, describe the heart as racing. She said really racing, but racing is enough. Dryness in her eyes, reports no stomach pain. Now, this is hard. Maybe many people put pain, but you actually have to capture the word that the GP said. Have you had any abdominal pain? She said, no. So you couldn't, pain alone here would not work. Um, we needed the extra word. She's had vaccinations for typhoid and hepatitis A. And even in this case, hep A would likely be accepted if you were in a hurry, but I do advise you write it in full. She also had cold sores. You can put the location but just cold sores is enough. Or if the medical word comes to mind, that would be accepted. And lastly, lastly she underwent a lumpectomy. All right. How did you go, everyone? How did you go? What was your score this time? Without, like, done as a mock test. Share your score, everyone. Uh, has to be plural, yes. Dryness, oh, that's a really good question. In her eye, I think you need plural, Lisette. I think in her eye, it wasn't in one eye, it was in two eyes. So I would say you need plural. Same applies to cold sores. You need plural. All right. Some people did got perfect scores, legendary work. A lot of people getting eights and sevens and nines. They're a bit harder because we did a bit less preparation, a bit more like mock conditions. The good news, everyone, I can see some great scores. Part A, it's not complicated. You don't have to dig deeper. All you have to do is capture that word. That's a great thing about part A. That is a great thing. Um, because it's just, if you hear the word, you get the answer. A bit like reading part A. If you find the word, you get the answer. So it's not too complicated in that sense. So that's really good news. Um, so if you build your vocabulary and skills, then you can build your score. It just requires hard work. Now, someone's asking about headache. Would headache as plural be acceptable? Um, yes, because headache, if I've got really bad headache, headache can also be singular, but mean you've had, it's a symptom, multiple headaches. I've had headaches, I'm suffering from headache. So it has the same meaning. So singular plural for headache is fine, May. Um, Sonia says, can you repeat the audio? This is going to be posted so you can watch this video afterwards. You'll be able to play it directly on Facebook as well. All right, so that's two tasks we've done today. Let's just have a quick look at what we've done. Uh, I'll just jump to, so look, I've brought up some online material, everyone. Look, have a look at this page and take a screenshot if you wish. But to build your skills, you can't just do practice test after practice test. You know, you might be studying for this exam for several months, you know, you might have a long period of study. So you can't just do practice tests. You've got to build your skills. So this is like skill building formative study. So my suggestion to you, if you're getting lower scores than 10, then really build your skills and get used to different accents. Now, you've got to get used to the Australian accent um, because a lot of the texts are Australian, but you also need the UK accent. 
lots of Brit accents and the US accent slash Canada. Um, so you will get a variety of accents. And so listening to um, going to different websites and studying online is a great way. And here's a few beauties. Outback ER, that's a classic Australian one with quite a strong Australian accent. Catalyst, I'm going to show you in a minute. Anything produced by Dr. Norman Swan, you know will be good. He's a famous Australian media doctor. He's got lots of online um, podcasts produced. So Health Report and Health Minutes. UK, a well-known TV show, 24 Hours in Emergency. All of those great medical shows about health departments are always very good. And, of course, the BBC produces great stuff. Um, case note to look at that in a minute and health and well-being and us there's lots again as well but ted talks is a classic focusing on medicine so use those resources everyone and i'll bring them up for you so firstly i've got three websites or four i'm going to show you now today's task we did listing sample three from the OET Centre website. That's what we did. So if you come here, it's beautifully, it's all here. Got the question paper, the answer key. Download the transcript. And there it is, everyone. I'm a big believer in studying transcripts. Who likes studying transcripts? Do you like studying transcripts? I'm a big believer in transcripts, everyone. Great way to build your skills. So you can go through all of this again and use it to build your skill. And one little tip I'll give you, when you're listening, get a friend to help you. But one thing you can do here, if you print this out, and then just find a few words um, and blank them out. So I'm going to blank out a few words. So I blank out a few words here. You can do this yourself. Blank out a few words like that, and then suddenly you've created your own task. Get your friend to do it, print it out, play the audio, and just practice filling the gaps. When you do that, you're working on your spelling, you're working on your vocabulary. It's an instant resource. You're working on your ability to follow a script and capture that word. So a really... Um, Great way to build vocabulary. How does that sound, everyone? Does anyone do that technique where you just blank out words and then print it out? So there's an endless resource, everyone. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, so that's that, everyone. Now, I mentioned Catalyst. This is the Australian one. So this is a great one, everyone. This one's on Miracle Babies. It's long for building your skills. The womb really what I is like the about sanctuary this, for the fetus to grow and develop. It has transcripts so you can follow through. And we the same invade here, that everyone. sanctuary, really. I suggest but you don't only watch in the, the video necessarily. At the Martin Make out words Brisbane, and see there is an expert medical team that specialises in caring for high-risk pregnancies. There's about 50% the great difference resource there for the two everyone. babies. That's a big difference. Because while most of the 300,000 babies born each year in Australia... And that's the Australian accent. And so many episodes, everyone. It goes all the way back to 2008. And you just pick the medical topics, is my advice. Be really specific. Um, that's a great one. If you can't... This is an Australian show. If you can't watch it, get a VPN to help you to do that. Um, all right, another one. TED Talks. Here's our US accent. So again, TED Talks, how does transplants work? Um, this is a really nice one. Again, we have transcripts. So TED Talks is a great resource. I like TED Talks as well because they're often short. This one's only five minutes long. So if you've only got a short period of time, use that one. Really, really good. Try your TED Talks. And BBC. Now, these ones don't have transcripts. They're really nice audios. And there's a program called Case Notes. Maybe you, you've used it. BBC Radio 4. 
and you got different topics, gut bacteria, morning sickness, epilepsy, the pancreas, radiotherapy, a never ending resource, everyone. And so many episodes, all right? So you just can't go wrong with this type of product um, or this type of listing, you'll never run out. All right, the last thing to share with you, this is our website, everyone. Um, come along, if you wanna get focus study with a teacher guiding you every step of the way, come along to OET online, check out our free taster course. I'll drop the link in for you. where I can and check that out. And um, that will go a long way to your preparation. All right, and that's it, everyone. Now, a few questions coming through. Yusra wants to subscribe to OET online, but there's 12 hours difference. Is there any way? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. We'll talk a little bit about what we do, everyone. Still got a minute or two left. So look, we what our goal is with OET Online, um, we've got a great timetable. And what, what our goal is, because we, of course, we have people all over the world, as we saw today, people are from all parts of the globe. Maybe you're from the Americas or Africa or Europe, or maybe you're from Asia, maybe you're from Australia, New Zealand, Oceania. So if you think about the world, it's sort of divided into zones, isn't it, everyone? We've got this sort of zone here, the Americas. Then we've got Europe and Africa through here. And then we've got the Asia zones here, as well as things in between. So there's time zones, everyone. But what we do with our classes, our goal is to, because we have two classes per day, and we have teachers also located in all parts of the world. So what that means is we run classes. It's a rotating schedule. And every week, there will always be classes in your time zone. So don't have any fear about that. You'll always find multiple classes per week in your time zone. But when you're working, when you're sleeping, we record the lecture so you will be able to watch it after. All right. So make sure you do that. I did post the link. A few people are asking for the link. There it is. Uh, check it out here. Not, not posting on Facebook because my chat's not working. Oh, here we go. Posted the link there now on Facebook. Oh, no, that's YouTube, sorry. Not posting on Facebook because it's not working for me right now, OET Center Facebook. Um, but yes, just visit our website, oetonline.net.au, and you will find classes in your time zone. And if listening is your weak area, we do offer classes to suit you. We got our virtual class Platinum and a virtual class Standard, two great courses. Uh, the Platinum comes with private tutorials and plenty of content. And the standard has lots of your live classes every week for listening. It's half the price, great value as well. So check out those options. Um, lots of ways to pass OET. We can certainly help you. Thank you for coming today, everyone. Looks like our time's up. I'm going to be back in another month. But in the meantime, stay well, stay healthy. and Good luck on your next OET exam. I'm Steve from OET Online. Bye for now.